Hello everyone, welcome to a video on Code Tech and Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about our Lord and Savior, CMake. What did you think I was going to say? If you're a fan of this channel, you might know that I talk about C++ and libraries and kind of project setups and been trying to find the best practice for that for years, well ever since I started programming, and I recently discovered that they're just flat out it isn't any there's nothing there's no standard there's no best practice there's a best practice for a certain person or institution and it's a thing that they usually do but it doesn't really correlate with necessarily the best way for you to do it so you can't go online and just read about oh yeah here's what everybody does it's uh here's what some people do here's what other people do here's what other people do and now here i am saying hey look i've been doing this for a long time and uh I think this is my favorite way to do it. It's a little confusing at first, but once you get used to it, it's pretty good. So I learned back in the day with make files. So if you don't know what a make file is, it is just a file called a make file and it runs commands. So at the top, it'll have like a uh, default and it'll say something that runs in bash. Like uh, usually it'll be like G++, um, your main.cpp and the out is whatever you want it to be. Those make files are what CMake turns into basically. CMake makes your make file, which sounds confusing and weird to say, but that's basically how it goes down. So uh, I'm saving this file. I guess I'm going to, real quick, I'm just going to go into my projects and make a new folder. I'm just going to make a new folder for this. Where's the new folder button? It's right here. Sure, I could go in command line and do make dir and all that stuff, but. It's right here. So we're just gonna call this uh, our Lord and Savior. Now anyone who searches my computer or sees my folders is gonna think I'm some kind of fundamental Christian, but uh, you know, whatever. So we're gonna name this file. Oops, let's do a search now. Make file. And you can do it with a capital M too, that's fine. So we save it. All right, so now that we have the make file, the make file runs, which is the make command. So I open my terminal here, and I'm gonna go CD into my projects, and then our Lord and Savior. That's gonna be funny to say. Maybe I'll actually put this repo up just to troll GitHub a little bit. That'll be that'd be fun. All right, so let's see what we got in here with a little bit of look, and we just got a make file. So if we type make, well, it's uh, it's a little confused. It says missing separator. That's because make, fire, make files do not accept spaces. And as you can see, I got spaces here. So what I actually need is this for, to be a tab. So I just highlighted them all and pressed tab and there is, tells me there's a tab. That's just a feature of this editor and a new line there. All right, so now that we, we save that, we go back into our command line and we type make and it tries to do the thing. Of course, it doesn't see the make, doesn't or it doesn't see the main. So it's just like, I don't, I don't have that. But if, for example, I just made one, No, hey, I got it, I got it. I got what we're gonna do. Hey, Zeus. Yeah, get it, get it. All right. And of course, we'll name this main.cpp. We should obviously return a zero or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't care about syntax. This is just an example of how to basically use a make file. And why do you need to know this? Why am I showing this in a tutorial about CMake? Because this is like the entire thing that CMake does. So if you don't know this, it's just like, it's like missing your roots when you're a tree. So you have to understand the very basics of a make file is all it does is, is just run whatever command you tell it to. And it's really, really a Linux thing. So Windows has their own way of handling CMake for their builds for Visual Studio or whatever compiler you're using, you can, you can you can get Linux support on Windows too. So this can be exactly relevant to Windows. Just depends on how you're building. Uh, I can do a video on the Windows version of this if you want. I just started up this one because it was easy. All right, so we basically get our out and we can run our out, of course. The dot slash and it says, "Hey Zeus." All right, so that's make files. I've got a list of things over here, right here. Yeah. If you think of anything else that should go in the next video, let me know. So I'm going to basically tell you how to get your project started. I'm going to talk about levels and projects mainly, and we'll see if I have time for variables and lives, but that might have to be next video. 
So I'm going to continue this and try to cover everything in CMake with this one. So CMake relies on a top level file called CMakeLists.txt. And it has to be exactly like that. It has to be capital C, capital M, capital L, and list plural, and dot txt. It has to be exactly that. So I'm just going to use the Linux command touch to create this file right now. And now if I look at my directory, I'll see that it exists right here, along with my other files that I made earlier. I'm just going to remove the other files because I don't need them. Make file and out. Goodbye. All right. So now that we have our CMake file, we can run CMake. And basically, to run CMake, you need to tell it where your source is and where your build folder is. And you can make your build folder where your source is, but please don't. But just, just no. Some projects do that, and I think it annoys some people. But once again, like I said at the beginning of this video, there is no standard for this either. And there's some standard for the install. We'll get to, to that way later about how to install with CMake, because CMake can do everything. Everything you can think of that you want to do for your project, it can do. You want a nice little executable for Windows that has the install that you used to see in for every other program? CMake can do that. That's kind of the end product, so we'll get to that probably at the end. But it's cool. And it can do a lot of other things along the way that your project wants, like run all the tests for your project and things like that. So we'll step by into that way later. For now, let's stick with the very roots. I just I just want to really sell this CMake thing because I think it is like the only way to go. And if you're doing it some other way, please just just do let's all do this. Okay, this is <laughs> this seems better. And also don't take my word for it. Do your own research, yada yada. Don't think that I'm like hundred percent sold on anything because, you know, I like to consider everything. So basically you type CMake to call a command. And of course it tells us the usage because we didn't give it any commands. You definitely need to at least do this bottom one. You need to path to where you want to build it and a path to your source. And it considers its current path from where you run it. So what most people do is they make a directory called build. And that's where they build everything. I'm going to remove that real quick. Uh, okay, I gotta do a uh, recursive force build. Okay, so I'm gonna move that real quick because I do it slightly different. I call the folder out and then build. Um, and oh yeah, I gotta put a dash p in front of that for it to build all of those since they're multiple directories. And then what you do is you go into your out folder and then you build folder. So you basically just go to the folder that you want to build in. Well, you don't have to, because as you saw up here, you could specify the path to it. So it needs to know where your source is. So you go cmake dash s back a directory, back another directory. And that's where the root level cmake list.txt is. Actually, that's, that's the important thing. It needs to know where that root one is, where to start. And we need to know our build path. Our build path is where we currently already are. So we just put a dot for that. So there we go. That'll say, the root cmake list.txt is two directories back and we want to build here and this is this is really the main thing this is the one thing you need to know if you know anything at all is this right here the source and where to build all the special options come later if you need them and there it goes and it's checking that file and it generates and spits it out so what we'll see in our build We'll see our CMake files, our CMake cache, CMake install, and a make file. You don't touch any of these ever because they're generated with CMake. Instead, you just edit your CMake list.txt. So let's just look at that make file. So I'm just going to do a cat make file. And here it is. Start from the top. You see it has all sorts of stuff. Default target, all, phony, default target. And as you can see, it's got this command like this, like I was doing with that make file, because this is just a make file. It just builds it all out best based on your CMake list.txt. And the only thing it knows about really is where our source dir is, because we told it, and where the binary dir is. Dir directory. I'm just getting used to saying it that way. And there's all our stuff. But as you can see, it doesn't actually do any building of any program. There's no 
GCC. There's no call to anything. It's basically just got some root set up with, with that actually doesn't do much. But even a, so, I guess the point of that is even a blank CMake list.txt will function. But let's go actually make our CMake list.txt do its main thing. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code here on this directory. And let's take a quick look. We got this CMake list.txt right here. So at the top, you make CMake minimum required. So this is the minimum version of, oh, version here of CMake that you require. And we'll just put like 3.10.2. And you can always check by going in here and doing CMake. I think it's just dash dash version. And yeah, I want 3.13.4. So a lot of people say you should use whatever you're currently using as latest version. But if you know you're doing stuff that's backwards compatible, you can make this older. This doesn't matter a whole lot. You just have to have something here, basically. Make it some version that you know will work so that's one thing that is required here. We're going to do a little different this time. This time when we run our CMake, we're going to run it with the source right where we are and the build down a couple of directories like so. So you can do it either way. It doesn't matter where you run CMake from. As long as you tell it where the root CMake file is and you tell it where the build is, you're good. And there it goes. It generates it. There's nothing really new here other than it's going to now probably in there do some kind of check for that in the cache or something so still doesn't do much so generally what you do on the top level one is you do add project call this uh, our lord and savior olas it'll be olas and it crashes what is this oh it's not I'm sorry it's I don't think this is add project I think it's just project yeah there we go it's just project okay and the next thing we need to do if we want it to actually build something is we say I think this is add executable and we give the executable name um, oh not no less <laughs> I think this is just project name we'll see I'll get an error if not but it should translate into this basically and I could even expand it out and say something else, but it needs the source next here. And the source is main.cpp. So we want to build it into an object called whatever this project name is. Let's see if that's correct. Yep, looks good. So now when we run make, which we can't because we're not in that directory. So we got to go to the out and into the build. And then once we're in here, we'll notice that's where the make file is. We could look at the make file again just to see what it has now. And we'll now see and it has some stuff in here about that CPP file that we put as the executable. Okay, well, let's let's just try running this make file and see what happens. Built target. Okay, so now let's look again and see what we got. Yeah, the project name was correct. So yeah, that is a correct thing to get your project name anytime you want to reference it. So you'll see this little operator all over the place and it basically just references a variable. CMake saves a lot of variables automatically, like your project name basically any of these things you set it's probably saved somewhere and you can look up the documentation for for more about those and I'll mention them as I go you know the ones I use but basically you can do this for a lot of different things to reference names that way you don't have to keep typing the same note, name over and over and if I change this name to something else then the project name throughout the rest automatically updates you know standard with variable type stuff for programming so CMake allows some of that special stuff another cool thing about it as a build system Okay, well, we've got a basic project set up. It does run. Let me get this back up here. Let's go ahead and run it with the dot slash. And it, of course, says the same thing that we already programmed earlier. That's the very basics of getting CMake started with just, uh, you know, something that executes. And that's going to do it for this video. I will be covering more topics as we go. I didn't even get the levels. Really, all I got to got to was projects in the top level. So really, all I did was like top level. So I also want to talk about levels and libs. I did talk a little bit about variables, but I'll talk more about how to set your own because you can set your own variables and do do things with them. I'll show you some examples that get into these things hopefully next video. I'll try my best to make it concise. This is a lot to explain and there's so many different directions to go that it's actually quite hard to make it concise. 
that's one of the things I struggle with on this channel and coding is the many, many, many different directions I could go and trying to decide which is the best one to actually like show. Because don't forget to hit like to help support me and uh, anything else you want to do is much appreciated. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Goodbye. See you next time on... Oh, God. <sighs> Code wrecked in tutorials. Uh... See, make. You know what you came here for. You want to you wanna learn. What's the best? How do I stomp the competition with my build system? <laughs>